Warmer temperatures, cleaner air, and the next thing you know, spring will be here. The elements of winter can take a toll on our activity levels, causing some of us to become more sedentary in the colder months. But don't let that stop you. Finding ways to be active year-round can really pay off. And there's huge health benefits of staying active consistently. Whether you're looking to get back on track with your goals or just looking to be active and feel healthy again, the change begins now. It's so just kind of a, a new start and, and a great time to set new goals. What you do now could have an impact on your health for the rest of the year. And what better time to start than right now? Welcome to a KSL 5 News Special Edition, examining your life, your health. Good evening and thanks for joining us for this special edition of Your Life, Your Health. We've got some great information for how you can make health a habit. Spring definitely in the air today it was an amazing yeah. day with more to come. So now's the time to get ready. Do you have plans to run a marathon, a 5K, or just looking to do some hiking and biking this summer, more than last summer? Conditioning our body now will set us up for success for the rest of the year. In the next half hour, we'll talk about how to stay on track with our goals for better health and where to find motivation. We'll share a tasty recipe for seafood lovers that'll work wonders with your immune system. Plus a seven minute workout that's been scientifically proven to work without the expensive gym equipment. All sounds good, but first, anyone familiar with Utah's winters knows that our days can begin with a beautiful, crisp, clear morning, only to turn into a soupy smog riddled with health hazards. Debbie Dujanovic uncovers exactly what's in the air we breathe and the lasting effects it can have on our health. Look out your window. Can you see the quality of the air? Looks are deceiving. You know, when you can see it, smell it, and taste it, we definitely know that it's bad. But we can have you know, poor air quality, even when it looks good outside. But did you know we should be concerned about the air quality year round? Our harshest air comes twice a year. The obvious winter inversion and again in the summer with high levels of ozone. Winter inversion happens when warm air traps in cold air, collecting pollutants from cars, homes and factories. The pollutants, you know, that make up poor air quality can have both short term and even longer term effects on our health. Even the healthiest of people are not exempt. Whether that's kind of a, a short-term exposure or repeated exposure or long-term exposure over time, all are deleterious to health. Short-term exposure to poor air can increase your chances of suffering a heart attack. And when it comes to poor air, some of us are more at risk than others, like young children, older adults, and pregnant women. You know, there's emerging data showing that, you know, exposure to Poor air quality during pregnancy can have adverse effects on the developing fetus. Now, we are not saying to stay inside and wait until the next door clears out the air before you can exercise. We really want people to be smart and to be safe so that they can limit their exposure. Avoid the time of day when the inversion will be at its peak. With the morning commute and later in the day in the early evening commute, you know, make choices to exercise indoors. We want people to maintain their activity level and to not use poor air quality as an excuse to not exercise. And another helpful tool. Pay attention to the AQI so you can make decisions about your own personal exposure to the air quality and exposure for members of your family. For your life, your health, I'm Debbie Dujanovic. Debbie, thank you. It can be tough to muster the motivation to make it to the gym during the winter months, but believe it or not, exercise has more benefits than we might think. Ashley Moser reports on why it's important to stay active all year round. Dirty air, snowstorms, and freezing temperatures, all excuses we typically use to avoid going outdoors. Call it an instinct, a hibernate, or pure lack of motivation. Combine those days together, and before you know it, you spent most of the season parked on the couch. You can decline quickly, um, whether you have health conditions or not, if you uh, kind of adopt a sedentary lifestyle. If weather is your excuse, try keeping an eye on the forecast to find the best days to head outdoors. And when you do, bundle up. If you start warm and, and immediately you're active, then it it's, tends to be a lot more tolerable to be outside in the cold. If you feel you're out of shape, don't jump right in. Allow your body time to adjust. Start small to get back into it, but uh, consistency is really important. Mix up your routine to give your muscles time to recover. When setting a goal for yourself, it helps to write it down. And say, okay, this is how I'm going to accomplish this goal and, and anticipate what could get in your way. 
keep your goals realistic. This will set you up for success, making your personal journey more of an adventure than a sentence. Try working on one thing at a time, and if you have a big goal in mind... If that's the case, break it down. What are the smaller contributors that are going to also feed into that goal and me being successful at accomplishing that and, and just targeting one of those aspects at a time? So what about setbacks? Every year is packed with causes to celebrate and events just waiting to trip you up. For that, Julie says, plan ahead. Mindfulness about the other aspects of your life really help to keep that whole situation in, in balance. In the days our stress levels seem to be at an all-time high, realize no one's perfect. You have a tactical plan to stay on track. Don't let today sabotage tomorrow. For your life, your health, I'm Ashley Moser. Ah, looks good. Thanks, Ashley. Have you got a hankering for seafood? We have a unique, healthy recipe that's sure to please all the seafood lovers out there. Your life, your health, in partnership with KSL Intermountain Healthcare. Huh. See, that dispels the myth your mother always told you. Yeah. Put on your coat, you'll get sick. We finally, yep. we finally found out. All right. Mussels, clams, prawns, and crab claws. Have I made you hungry for dinner yet? These are just a few ingredients in the unique heart-healthy stew we're about to show you. Now, to show us how it's done, we go to the kitchen with Lori Pritchard. Chef Jason from Park City Medical Center joins us. Uh, we're making a heart healthy stew and talk about fishy <laughs> we've got lots of fish in the we, kitchen we do we've got a lot of varieties here and uh, in fact the dish that we are going to make is a sweet potato quinoa and seafood stew so i was inspired by that chipino kind of bouillabaisse hearty fish stew but i wanted to incorporate some great nutrients to the quinoa as well as the sweet potato so, so make it a little bit more healthy. yeah and, okay. and it's a wonderful dish for the winter so let's uh, can i get you to help me yes, with this absolutely so we've I'd got our burners to. going so i'm going to add some oil to this and we're going to actually start sauteing our celery our carrots, our onion, right in okay. here once I put the oil in. Isn't this called a mirepoix? In it is called mirepoix, yes, mirepoix, it's a French term. Uh -huh. There we go, nice hot pan, that's what we wanted. Okay. You want the juice from the celery in there? Yeah, okay. in. Uh -huh. throw it all in. Uh -huh. And start stirring that around, and like, as we call it, saute, saute those vegetables, and there's a spoon there for you. Okay. What I'll do over here while you're doing that, we just want to bring out the beautiful colors and aromatics of all that. Oh, it um, does. It doesn't it smell nice? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. So then in this pan, I'm going to uh, add a tablespoon of oil. Okay. And I want to actually steam our seafood. So we've got we've got some mussels here. Okay. Okay. And we'll put the, a few of those in there. We've got our prawns. Okay. And what do we got? Two. Let's, Let's throw one more in there. Uh, we've got our clams. Okay. These are little cherry stone clams. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to put our fish in basically right at the end when this is already steamed open, okay. as well as our crab claws, just to kind of reheat those. I wondered those. what those so, were. Yeah, these are beautiful. Uh, oh, those they're are called cocktail uh, crabs. Gorgeous. And so there's a whole art to eating them. You open this up, you bite this, and you scoop it out, and it's awesome. So then uh, you're sauteing that. Yep, That's I'm sauteing. going. Let's add our sweet potatoes to that as well. Okay. If you're okay with that? Yeah. All right. Um, I've got, in order to help steam this and get these clams and mussels open, I'm going to throw some. Uh, fish stock in there. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to cover that again and just let that go. Let Hopefully it steam. we'll. Yep. Um, let's add a little bit of our quinoa in here. Okay. Is there okay. any particular kind that would go no, good with this? Because I know sometimes you have like the red. Yeah, I've, I've used the red a lot. And okay. actually, red would probably look pretty, pretty cool in there. Okay. But I use the white this time. Um, let's throw some kale, kale. in there. Uh -huh. We like kale. Kale. Sure, kale's good for you. Yes, it is. It's excellent for us. Uh, yeah. And you like garlic, right? Yeah, I love All right, garlic. So let me, can I use that? Yes. We'll put some garlic in there. I I'm like, Italian, so you are, so am I. So let's, little. you got to throw some chili flakes in there. Okay, I like yeah. a little pungent. Okay. Um, we've got that going. So now we're actually going to bring out the kale, the kale color, beautiful mm -hmm. green. Um, this is still going. Let's add a little bit of, you know what I want to add? I want to add a little white wine to this. Oh, okay? perfect. Okay. So we've got a little white wine about in there. About a half a cup. Yeah, about, about that. that. Yeah, okay. this, this, all this is probably oh would goodness. serve about a good four to six servings. Okay. 
So we're making this. Yes, stirring we're making, it. Okay, Sauce and then in. we've got a beautiful pomodoro sauce, Italian pomodoro. tomato sauce, okay? Okay. So we've got that in there. For people who don't know what that is, tell them. Pomodoro is just a really tomato sauce. Okay. Okay. It sounds fancy, but it's a tomato sauce. And here we're going to actually add more broth. And again, okay. that's fish broth. Fish broth. Because we're making a fish stew. And uh, that's going to create kind of that bouillabaisse, chipino mm -hmm. kind of uh, soup like. Okay. okay. So you've got that going. That's how these go. Okay. Well, that's going well. We've probably got another minute on that. You're going. Wait okay. on there. Let's season this. Yes. Do you have a question? We're, we're running out of time okay. here. Um, what, are we waiting on the clams or we the are, mussels? We are, we are. Yeah, we're just waiting on that. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and so what do we do once uh, our clams open? This is the, um, yes. is it the char? That is, so that's Arctic char that we okay. have there. Okay. And I've already actually cleaned it up, but it looks like a beautiful piece of salmon. Uh, we basically have all the seafood. Okay. We would, we would take some of our bouillabaisse filling here, our chipino. Do something like this. Uh, okay. Seafood. And... Actually, at that point, we'll put that back and let that cook. Um, again, we'd warm some of these up in here, okay? And if you see, it's coming together nicely, okay? And I didn't get you, did no, I? You're, okay. You're good. Okay. So, so go ahead and make yeah. that, uh -huh. and then you put it on top. Yes. Uh -huh. And then you have. Some We'd have nice that. And if you want to grab one of those crostinis for me, Christine, that'd be wonderful. Coming your way. Okay. Perfect. We'll put one in there, and we'll finish with. Beautiful. Of and of course, right there. we have put okay. this recipe up on our website, ksl.com. Yes. Chef Jason, thanks so much Thank for joining you. us. Thank Smells you. delicious. Colorful mm. and healthy. Next, imagine a workout that requires no expensive equipment that you can do in your own home. The best part, it only takes seven minutes and it has proven results. If you've been following our workout prompts during the commercial breaks, well then you're well on your way to completing a workout that's gaining momentum across the country. We head to the home of Brooke Walker to find out more about the moves that could improve your overall health and endurance in just seven minutes. I have brought my work home. Our goal today is to show you that you don't need a lot of time, any fancy equipment, or even a gym membership to get in a solid workout. I'm joined by Liz Joy, the president of the American College of Sports Medicine, and this seven-minute workout, as it's called, is scientifically proven. It is. It is. It's based on some research done by some exercise physiologists up in Canada and originally developed by some other exercise physiologists down in Florida. So what constitutes a good workout in just seven minutes? Well, the thing about the seven-minute workout is it's a high-intensity circuit training workout that works lots of different muscle groups, as well as elevates your heart rate so you get an aerobic training effect as well as strength training. And it includes 13 exercises. You do each of them for 30 seconds with a 10 second rest in between. And that will improve your fitness. We do those 13 exercises and that makes up the workout. Correct. And ideally you do it twice, maybe three times. But twice gives you the scientific benefits that they talk about in calling it the scientific seven minute workout. Exercise enthusiasts like yourself probably hope that we get the bug, right? We get moving, we get going, and that motivates us to do a little bit more. Absolutely, you know, I mean, this is something that you can do regardless of the weather. And like you said, whether or not you have a gym membership or not, it's just incredibly accessible for anyone who has a smartphone or a computer. Okay, what's our first exercise? The very first exercise is jumping jacks. I can do that. Get ready for jumping jacks. Three, two, one. Rest for 10 seconds. Get ready for wall sit. Three, two, one. And we're gonna sit here for 30 seconds. Until our legs start to shake off. Exactly. <laughs> so we've utilized the floor. Yes. And the wall. And you said a chair was our next best tool. Yes, so the next exercise is called step up on chair. And you can leave <laughs> your, your right foot or your left foot. Okay. And we're gonna go up and down. And if you're gonna do this, you wanna make sure that you pick a really sturdy chair. Not yes. one not one on rollers. <laughs> so these are just a few of the 13 exercises available on the app, but another benefit you really like is the ability to customize. That's right, so even with the step ups, for example, if you wanted to, you could do it on a lower chair. Uh, the app also calls for sit ups, or push ups. 
And maybe from the push-ups, you would do them from your knees instead of from your toes. Or if you're not even comfortable doing from the knees, you could do a wall push-up. So the nice thing about this program is it can be really customized to your fitness level and to your ability. How often a week could we be working in the seven-minute workout? Well, ideally, the physical activity guidelines for Americans say we should be doing some form of strength training twice a week. Major muscle groups. And so if you did the seven-minute workout twice, two times a week, you would meet the recommendations. All right, Liz, thank you so much. You're welcome. We're only a few minutes into those seven minutes, so we better get going. Back to you. All right, thanks, Brooke. There are many apps available on both Apple and Android devices that offer this seven-minute workout. If you're looking for more information on the scientific study, the report was published in the New York Times and Huffington Post. I've been looking for a reason to cancel my gym membership, and I just saw one there. In seven minutes. Just go to the seven-minute app. Excellent. Coming up next, ready to dust off your running shoes and hit the pavement? A look at the best way to get back into a routine. Okay, so our advice tonight, there are three things to keep in mind to help you stay on track. First, if you feel uncomfortable going to the gym, like most of us do, or starting an exercise program, just find ways to get moving. Park further out, take the stairs, or take a quick walk around the office to give your brain a much needed break. And your legs, too. There and, and go for 10 minutes, and, and if that was easy, then add five more, and, and just build up, build up your endurance for activity a little bit at a time. Second, leave your promptings in your little everyday environment. Little sticky notes, inspirational pictures and quotes to serve as a daily reminder to keep us motivated and on track. All right, and third, most important, keep a positive attitude. Today's a new day. Let's just make the best of it today. That's right, a fresh start. If you'd like to find more information on developing healthy habits at home, at school, at work, visit intermountainlivewell.org. You can also make an appointment at any Intermountain Live Well Center for a complete health analysis by a team of doctors, dietitians, exercise psychologists who will help create a personalized prescription on how to live the healthiest life possible. So you can go get some professional help. Sounds good. I could use some professional whatever help. You, whatever it takes. <laughs> You, me, and the apocalypse is next. We'll see you back here at 10 right after Shades of Blue. All right, and, and exercise, everybody. We'll see you in a few hours.